Hello. 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 Um, Partly. Yeah, we just, we, team we, we've just been to White Hart Lane and mm -hmm. actually on that spot on the pitch and it, uh, it, it was quite emotional uh, uh, for Fabrice. There's, I mean, you're a regular visitor yeah. to White Hart Lane, aren't you? Does, it, you? does your mind go back to that incident every now and again? Well, I've been quite often since. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think about it some of the time. Um, but usually I'm just worried about how the team's doing. Which at the moment <laughs> most is fans, very important, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and take us take us back to that, that, that time. There you are, you're sitting in the stand as as a spectator, as a fan. And did you see Fabrice collapse? Did you actually see it happen? Or I can't remember if I actually saw him fall down, but became aware of it very quickly if I didn't. And then I saw the team physio and then doctor running out, and you could see them starting CPR. So it's at that point we realised that something more was going on than a normal injury. But but from the distance you were away, you were in the upper, where were you? Quite upper East. Upper East, yeah. which is quite away from the pitch, yeah. isn't it? Could, could you get some sort of indication of what the problem was? Well, because they were doing CPR yeah. and he'd collapsed in the middle of the pitch without being injured, because I'm a cardiologist, you kind of realised that almost certainly he'd had a cardiac arrest caused by running around, so there was going to be something seriously wrong and, with his And at that point, as, as, as an expert in the field, you were thinking to yourself, I've got to get onto the pitch, presumably. Yeah, I kind of thought I should go down and try and help. Yeah. Um, and spoke to two of the stewards um, who initially said they've got everyone they need. And then, another, then my brothers pushed me back and I said again, look, I do this every day. Yeah. I should go and help. And the third steward took me down around the back. And we ran down the back of the stairs. You know the ground well. So you go down the back of the stairs and they opened a the door and just said, that's the way. And ran straight through the crowd, um, through a little gate. I can't remember if they opened the gate or I jam jumped over it and then just ran across the pitch. Mm. And then suddenly thought, what am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, but spoke to... The well, what did you do? Well, um, they, were, they, were, they were doing really good CPR. And I've said over and over again, the reason Fabrice did so well and really survived and woke up as he did was because they were doing really good CPR right from the outset. Yeah. And if you were going to have a cardiac arrest that day, I think Tottenham was as good a place as any in probably the world. Why? Why? It's, it's so well organised. The Premier League has certain stipulations about what needs to be in place. Every club has to have a doctor. You need to have a defib, defibrillator um, at the pitch side. And so both club doctors had a defibrillator and there was a spare. So they had three defibrillators. Tottenham have a team of paramedics or, or an ambulance crew and they have a London ambulance trained paramedic, a guy called Peter Fisher, who's there every match. Um, they have a, an ambulance sitting just at the entrance or the exit of the tunnel so they can go straight out onto the street without wasting any time. Um, everything was really mm. in position and the, the doctors and the physios, they all do a course uh, which includes learning to do CPR and they update that I think every year. And I, it's good to know, at least you have them in the right place. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> have totally had the right people around you. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I said before, this guy is one of, there's not many in the world that you can count that can go either way and you know I don't know this guy I just met him a couple of days after I woke up and when he explained to me what he done and I'm called not only but nothing but totally unbelievable respect and and I'm very grateful for this guy very very grateful it's kind of you to say so yeah. but I, I think maybe the same thing would have happened if anyone was there but because we all train in the same way um, and I wasn't involved right at the outset so I said you know can I help um, put any lines into a vein for instance um, but they were doing everything as soon as we got off the pitch then I got involved I was looking after your airway mm -hmm. and then once we were in the back of the ambulance where I feel a bit more at home because we can do things we started doing yeah. stuff forgive a, a little bit of a mm -hmm. layman's ignorance here but we, we've all heard the story of, of what 78 minutes with the heart stopped yeah. and all that and it's quite difficult for us to comprehend from, from, from the initiation from, you get onto the pitch his heart stopped yeah it's not working yeah so they're trying to bring him round at that yeah. stage? So they, they're doing cardiac massage. Yeah. So the, the most important thing you can do at that stage is do cardiac massage. You want to keep blood pumping around the brain. That's the most important thing. Because even if you get the heart working, if there's been no blood going around the brain, you've not achieved a great deal. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is give an electric shock. 
um, especially with the type of rhythm that Fabrice had, mm. and they gave electric shocks. And you would have thought in most circumstances, after one, maybe two or three electric shocks, he would come round. And I think usually that's what you would, you would have expected. The fact that he didn't come round with the first few electric shocks meant that me being there was much more helpful. Yeah. If he'd have come round with the first few electric shocks, fantastic. He'd have started waking up on the pitch, he'd been taking an ambulance, gone to hospital, and probably made it as good a recovery as he's done now, but a bit quicker. Um, the fact that he didn't have a normal output, his heart wasn't pumping after he left shots, made it more complex. Mm. And having someone who's used to dealing with that situation there made it a lot easier for the doctors who were already involved. So, so there you are, it's, it's becoming a long period of time without the heart, but at what point I mean, we all see these you know, dramas on television yeah. where they're all pumping away, and then at some point the doctor goes, no, nah, it's not going to happen. Was it, were you close to that? Yeah, so we did the ambulance, we, got to, we came here, so we decided to come to London Chess, got into the lab, which is almost underneath here, so we have everything there ready. We have a, an automated machine to do the cardiac massage, which does it even better. We're able to put tubes in all different bits of the body, put a pacing wire in, all that sort of thing. And despite that, we weren't getting anywhere. And I think Fabrice knows this. I went and spoke to Jonathan Tobin, who was the yeah. modern doctor at the time, and said, we're going to carry on for a while more, but it's not looking good. Mm -hmm. I think I said, I went to him twice. Jonathan was in a bit of a state, as you can yeah. imagine, um, so because he knows, and he knows Fabrice very well. But he understood. But then, fortunately, we did a couple of other things, and the heart started pumping. Did that surprise you? Yeah, I suppose right. it did, because we'd gone on for so long, and you know, the longer you go on, the more worried you are you're not going to get the patient back. It was your decision wasn't to come to, to this hospital even though they're obviously because this is we've just done this journey and it's quite a long journey because uh, there, there are closer hospitals yes. but you, you felt his best chance was here. So yeah. North Middlesex is it? a couple of minutes around the corner so it was my decision in conjunction with um, Peter Fisher the paramedic and I think he had it in his mind as well he, he, I think it was a joint decision yeah. really to, to do that and I, I think it was the right decision because we needed as much equipment as we could and we needed it. They'd have a team who was used to dealing with cardiac arrests, but they wouldn't be dealing with quite such complex arrests in the same frequency as we are. S 78 minutes is, is, is a long time, time. isn't it? Is, is, is this f unbelievably freakish? Are we talking it's almost like... Uh, I, I don't think it's freakish, no. but it's really unusual. Yeah. Um, none of us can recall an arrest that lasted so long with such a good outcome, but we can all recall some arrests that have gone on for a fair amount of time. Yeah. Is, is the fact that Fabrice, you don't mind me talking yes, about this, hopefully, <laughs> but he's, he, was, he was a young, young 23 yeah. at the time, uh, fit, did that make a difference I, to actually I, professional footballer? Yeah, I think it makes a big difference. And I, and I think the fact that they've been running around, probably his arteries were all dilated, as big as they're going to get, so the flow of blood with the cardiac massage was going to be more effective. That's our, that's our theory, yeah. it's not something you can prove. Yeah. And, and I suppose the other thing is not just the fact that he's, he's survived that experience, also the fact that it's not had a particularly detrimental effect in terms of the stop of oxygen to the brain, for example, or I mean, he seems in, he seems, <laughs> seems alright. <laughs> I mean, the, the incredible thing is that when he woke up, so yeah. having resuscitated him, got his heart working, we brought him upstairs, he was outside of this room at the time, so we were on intensive care, as you know, and then he came in here um, to get some privacy, and he was cooled down, so what we do after a long cardiac arrest is we cool the body temperature to about 34 degrees um, for 24 hours. And then on the Monday morning, yeah. um, we decided to warm him up then and turn the sedation in, off. You yeah. came in and you were writing yeah. and then... And he... he <laughs> you remember that? Oh, that I first. remember him like keeping writing and then he came in and said, that hey, that's for the first time I woke up. Yeah, yeah, so we got the message now, says he was waking up, so came up and he was waking up. and. I think I whispered into your ear, yeah. um, what's your name? And I think something like, uh, I understand you're quite a good footballer. Yeah. Yeah. I and said I'd try it. You'd try it, yeah. So you made a joke. Yeah. <laughs> but at this stage, presumably, you had no idea what was going on. No, I, 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 were you asking questions immediately? Or? I've asked him, like, what am I doing here? You know, is that the word we'll tell you later on? Yeah. You know? And to start with, because your memory to begin with wasn't was good, you kept asking. We, yeah. we had to tell you over and over. I think um, Shona was explain to you what happened over mm -hmm. and over again. Yeah. But gradually you started to remember things. Yeah. And he made a, it was a remarkably fast recovery. Mm. I, mean, I think in the first morning you were already speaking more than one language. Yeah. <laughs> Some memory worked there. That can't be so as a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, it's, I said this guy is one of guys, one of. Yeah. There's not many in the world. If he, have, you know, I'm sure when she goes to detail and tell you that every single step of the way, it's unbelievable. Why did it happen to such a young, fit man? There, there are a whole group of things that can cause athletes to, to collapse, mm -hmm. and there's about four to six hundred young young um, people in this country die suddenly from heart, mm -hmm. heart attacks like this, from cardiac arrest unexpectedly. Um, and everyone is uh, an absolute disaster, as you can imagine. Well, of course, yeah. and, regardless uh, of fitness or... Yeah, and often they're very fit. And it can be a problem with the muscle of your heart, it can be a problem with the electrical system of your heart. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally it's the structure of your heart. You've been born with something you didn't know about, and it leads to this. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of work going on, both trying to work out how you can pick these up before they happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not easy, is it? I mean, Fabrice was telling me that earlier, that, that you know, even if you had a really strong fitness test just before that game, it would not necessarily have shown any kind of weakness. No, Fabrice had had a scan and a, an ECG yeah. in the October before yeah. it happened in March that was normal. They sent it down to us straight away because they were worried that we missed something and it was mm -hmm. completely normal. And you probably can pick up about half of uh, the people who are at risk of having a cardiac arrest. And the problem with the screening systems is you'll pick up some people who are never going to have a problem and you stop them from playing sport, which is also a disaster for them. Mm. If you say to a young, potentially um, impressive footballer that they're not going to be able to play football professionally, no. yeah. that's awful. Were you the person that... The, when we said to... Was, you told me already, it was, yeah. it was I said abroad, that, wasn't it? We went to see told. Pedro yeah. from Gala, and I think Professor Chilin was in London Bridge. He literally just made a word that we should call it there. Because the thing... The thing oh yeah. That, that was most noticeable to me is that the, the motions of, of not necessarily the you know the heart attack what happened to him actually the the real thing that gets him is that, that he can't play yeah. football anymore and I suppose in your situation as a doctor that's you know you can't help him on that front no. you can't you can't go that far. Now, if someone told me when I was in medical school I couldn't be a doctor I'd be yeah. devastated in the same way. Be yeah. Awful. Yeah. Your plans, everything you were expecting to happen in your life suddenly has to change. Mm. But you're alive, aren't you? Yes, that's the most important thing. And you've even had another, another child. So yes, yeah. so they're running me crazy, but they're all right. That's the important things in, in, in life. And um, this place must be, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's really mixed emotions about this place, of course, because you've woken up here and your dreams yeah. have been shattered, but at the same time, this place is hugely responsible for you actually being here. Oh, yeah, massively. I think uh, I missed it, to be fair. If I'm honest, I missed it. Staying in here, you miss this place. You uh, miss the hospital. I, I mean, I just <laughs> made so much friendship with the staff here, and it become part of me. You know, every time I come in, I always have to spend less an hour, go around and see who I know who looked after me, just to see how they are. And you know, as like I said, it brings back good memory. There's not a sad memory in this place for me at all. I just grateful that I had this man to look after me on my time here. You know, him and his staff were just great. And I'm forever grateful for this guy like this guy here. And it's a big team of people. I mean, yeah. the ITU staff are fantastic here. And they did a great job. And they were as res more responsible, so, really, than yeah. uh, I was once you were woken up and yeah. being looked after. And then there's Sam as yeah. well. I'm, I'm, um, he, Sam I think he's met Sam, but hasn't really spoke yeah. to Sam. But Sam is one of those guys who just top, top draw. I'm just glad you went along to a football game that evening. Yeah. FA Cup tie, quarter yeah. final. <laughs> and I wasn't going to go. Really? Yeah. We were, we were out for lunch um, and uh, we were meant to be out for longer and we'd finished and we were sitting chatting and I had my brother's spare season ticket at home and we were only just down the road and I said to my wife, you know there's a match on at, I think it was a five o'clock kickoff or a yeah, half five yeah, kickoff, half five. I said I'm just going to pop on the bike and cycle up to, the, to White Hart Lane, and it's about a 40 minute cycle and for some reason she allowed me, usually she'd say no you can't go, <laughs> so <laughs> if I cup tie them, yeah, what a final, exactly. can't be missed really. <laughs> No, thank, thank heavens you didn't. Well, mm. Didn't you say that there were quite actually f f one or two cardiac? There were a few cardiologists so, around. So cardiologists. There's certainly two I know well who were there yeah. um, who didn't get onto the pitch. Did they try? Do you know? I'm not sure. One, no. one came down the back and came into the ambulance um, just before we were setting off, and he, he phoned um, the hospital and phoned ahead to say we were on the way. Mm. It's called White Hart Lane for a reason, then, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought of Which that. is a terrible problem. Yeah. It's a shame, <laughs> completely. Yeah. What's, what, what, what now for Fabrice? Well, Tell he's me. done really well, so hopefully he'll just go from strength to strength. And he's I'm doing just waiting for him to call him Mr. Fabrice yeah. and go back and play. Yeah. 
That's the holy hop yeah, away. I wish we could. I wish we could. <laughs> but uh, you're doing your degree. Yes, yeah. yeah. I assume that's all Is going it well. totally inconceivable? That, you know, with the, with the way medicine evolves and is getting better and stronger. And I think it's extremely unlikely. Yeah. And I, 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 I wouldn't risk you it. You never forget the dream. I, right? I, I, I wouldn't risk it if he even, even told me he can't no. play. No. Yeah. No, at all. I suppose being that close, yeah. it just makes you really... Oh yeah, it's always in the back of my head, regardless. Yeah. Even he said, Fabrice, there is this new medical stuff we can think and trigger back, back to normality. Nah. For your family? Nah, nah. I've, I've, That's what I mean, for your family you wouldn't... Go I've got the kids, yeah. you know, I want, to, I want to see and grow and enjoy life with them, so why would I risk it? You know, I believe most people in England dream playing the Premier League, playing the FA Cup. Play semi final in the cup, even the loss you can still, but hey, <laughs> you know, you play this, yeah. so what more can you ask for? This is where my dream was just taken away from me. You know, 